Welcome to today's uh, teleconference with quarterbacks coach Frank Pons. We ask that each of you mute your devices until you're asking questions. When you wish to ask a question, please unmute your phone, identify yourself, ask the question, and then return your phone to mute, please. So go ahead with your questions for Coach Pons. Hey, Coach Pons, Cameron here with the Curry Journal. Um, I'm curious, what do you see um, is the biggest difference in McHale right now um, to where he was when you guys got here and got a first a chance to work with him last spring? I think the biggest thing has been uh, his uh, study habits as a quarterback from when we first got there to where it is now. Oh, and obviously the poise that he developed throughout the year, uh, just becoming a better student of the game and understanding the offense. Uh, he's playing with a lot of confidence, and, and I always attest everything in, in quarterback play to being confident. And the only way you you attain that is by knowing what you're doing offensively, knowing where everybody's at, understanding the concepts, and he's done that extremely well. Coach, uh, Fred Calgill from WLKY. When, when you see quarterbacks jump from year to year, what do you look for, and how does McHale fit into that? What kind of jump do you expect him to make this year? What areas did he need to improve in that maybe we'll see significant improvement in? I think he still needs to keep improving in his poise and, and being in the pocket and delivering the ball on time. And that's the biggest thing we've talked about this uh, offseason is coming back this spring uh, when we when we were in spring practice and he was developing that. He played, he, again, he was playing with a lot of confidence. You can see it in his play his understanding, just knowing what he's doing. And the biggest thing going into this 2020 season is to develop that, continue to develop his poise in the pocket presence and being able to deliver the ball on time. We always talk about in our room is to throw a receiver open. Don't see him open, throw him open. And he's doing that. And, and you saw that in, in the seven practice we had in spring. We were able to see those things. So we're happy. We're excited about his uh, progress and his development. And he's going to continue getting better. Coach Michael McCann at CardinalAuthority.com. Uh, looking at, at Juwan Pass, obviously he's had some injury issues last year, and obviously he wants to continue to, to compete. But you know, as the, the oldest vet on the team, how do you see his role in that quarterback room this year? Well, we always talk about, guys, we, we're going to continue to compete. And obviously uh, Puma wasn't able to play a bunch. Uh, he was out the second game of the year and just got back in, in, in spring, this past spring. So – you can see a little bit of rust in him. Uh, the first few practices uh, towards practice five, six, and seven, he started. you started seeing the old Puma understanding and, and playing confident and throwing the ball well. And from what I hear, he's just throwing the ball extremely well right now. I talk to these guys all the time and see how things are going and how they're working out and how do they feel about themselves. But, you know, he, he's, uh, he's upbeat. He's ready to go, and we're going to continue to compete uh, every single day, every practice in the meeting room and outside on the football field. So. We're excited to see him push Malik and continue to improve his game. And I think everything's going to be fine. It's a very competitive room, so we're very happy with the guys we have. And they're all good. It's, it's a good problem to have. So we're excited to see how this the development goes for all the guys, really, but especially with, for, with Jawan who wasn't able to complete the season last year. Hey, Coach, this is Tyler Grieber from WHAS 11. Mikhail has said before that, that you really brought him down to earth and, and grounded him so he could become more confident as a player. How did you do that, and how do you continue to do that to, to help him continue to develop? Well, the number one thing is, you know, obviously, our culture has a standard, and, and we've had a standard at the quarterback position. We've been fortunate and blessed to have guys that have bought it into the system and understand the, the offense and just really have a clear concept of what we're doing offensively. And that's the biggest thing. And I told him, you know, when we talked when we first met, I said, you're going to have to make the choice. You're, it's going to be your decision if you want to be a productive quarterback at the power five level. And that's going to come from you being a poised quarterback and having a pocket presence and just understanding that, you know, I can always run. I can always take off and run, but you can't drop back and be in the pocket thing. I'm going to run first, pass second, because that's going to defeat the purpose. And Malik, to his credit, he did that. He chose to be a better passer, um, um, have better better presence in, in the pocket. And just his poise was the biggest thing that we saw as a staff and me as a quarterback coach to see him develop throughout the year. 
Coach Cameron, let's carry general again. You, you mentioned, obviously, Mikhail um, wanting to be a better passer and not really rely solely on his feet. How much does that um, – when when they, he he put he puts that forward and try to focus on that, how much does that open up what you guys do offensively last year and a lot of going forward this year? Oh, it does wonders for offense, especially in the passing game. And just – you think as, as a defense, you, you, you want him – you, you think he's going to take off running, but he's not. He's, he's looking to pass first, and he's throwing the ball extremely well. Malik, from day one, showed that he has the potential to be a great passer and has a great touch on the football, especially on the deep balls. He really does that, and his accuracy has developed tremendously in the short game. So when you have to defend both now, if you drop guys back, then he can always take off on you. And if you just playing regular base defense, then he's going to be able to throw the ball on you as well. So – it's almost to a point where you, as the old saying, you pick your poison with him. So regardless of what you do defensively, he's always going to have an answer for you. Frank Ace, Jody Dimley with Cardinal. It's Jody, it's Jody Dimley with Cardinal Authority. You, you mentioned the, the accuracy in the short game. How difficult is that for a quarterback, and especially one who – you know, when we saw him a couple of years ago, he he might maybe was was going a little too quick of of getting out of the pocket and running. How 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 much of a process was that for you to get through to him on the accuracy and, and being able to stand in there and deliver that short ball? Well, number one, it started in the film room uh, for him to be able to understand. I will have the quarterbacks tell me, you know, what you what you have done here in this situation. And once they understand and comprehend and they're able to verbalize it to you, then we're on the right track because now they understand, okay, so we have a thorough understanding of what I need to do next time I'm in this situation. So he continued to develop that, watching a lot of film with him, uh, going in in, in drills and and truly emphasizing the pocket presses, movement, and being able to throw off the platform, on the platform, and just making the throws down the field. Um, through our receivers and routes and air. And it's just a progress. It continues to seven on seven and then 11 on 11. So it's just a continuous effort of learning every single day, understanding what you have to do when you have to deliver the ball and having that, that clock in your head as, okay, I have to deliver the ball now. There's, there's my window. I need to throw it there before he gets there, my receiver. So I think Malik understands those things. I think the whole room understands what, what we have to do offensively throwing the football. So, it's developed every single one of them. It's made very, very competitive. It's made it very competitive for those guys. And the confidence level for all the kids, really, has been tremendous. And we're happy to see that because we love the competition that goes on every single day in the room. Hey, Coach, this is Matt McGavick with Sports Illustrated. You mentioned about a pass and Cunningham's progressions, but how has Evan Conley progressed over this offseason? How has his presence in the quarterback room had an impact on the competition there? It's been tremendous. I know Evan has had some success this past year, and as a true freshman, he went in a few games and did re- real well. And obviously, he, did, he has some mistakes that he's obviously as a freshman he's going to do. And any anybody would be understanding of that. And he just continues to improve. But he's a very, uh, very studious kid. He's always watching film, always asking questions. You know, this spring his shoulder was a little banged up, so he was not as 100 percent as we want him to, to be, but. Now he's he's good to go. He feels awesome, and he's just very relaxed and very confident going into getting ready for this fall season. So we're excited to see him uh, compete again, and he's not definitely always in the mix because of his uh, study habits and his work ethics. I mean, he's a kid that you have to run out of the weight room all the time because he always wants to do more. Sometimes after practice, I got to tell him, hey, that's enough. We can't, you know, wear our arms out. So he's out there throwing more after we do our stuff. So. Uh, he's a very competitive young man, and I think you know he works real hard. And every time anybody works hard, has a chance to be very successful. And just to follow up on that, I know it's a little bit early to tell, but how would you say the depth chart um, at the quarterback position shakes out right now, especially with the backup position? Well, to be honest with you, you know, it's not gonna beat around the bush. The way we finish in the same practice is a. Uh, Macau will be number one. Uh, Puma Jawan is, is right close to him. Will be one B. Uh, followed by Evan and T. Webb is, is, is a kid that is learning, and I'm telling you guys right now that kid's gonna be special. He's got something to him, but you know he's uh, he's learning. He's like a, he was like a deer in headlights out there in spring ball for the first four practices and the last three practices. You started seeing 
your potential. You started seeing the skill set, his craft, the, the ability to throw the football with accuracy and velocity. So he's got some great tools to him, and he's going to be somebody exciting to watch in the near future. Frank Hayes, Jody, again, one, it's one thing for a coach to come in and say, I want this many quarterbacks or I'm using this many quarterbacks. But actually last year you guys had to use three and at one point could have maybe even possibly used a fourth. Does that make it easier to keep their, to keep their focus and to keep the drive and kind of keep the competition going, knowing that they're just a play away from, uh, from getting in the game? Yeah, absolutely. You know, we joke around all the time and and this one quote, one saying that I love and, and, and boxing. And that's when the, right before the fight, and when they bring the two fighters up, the referee tells them, protect yourself at all times. So we tell that to the quarterbacks at all times, you know, protect yourself at all times, because if you're the starter, whether you're two, you can lose the, the, the start in the backup position to the guy that's coming right, right behind you. Or if you're the starter, you can lose the starting position to your, to the guy that's breathing down your neck. So uh, it continues, it keeps them focused throughout the whole year through practices and we compete every practice. So we'll look at how they did with their completion completion percentage through practice. And the next day, if you were better than the other guy, then you go in first. So it is something that has uh, worked for us in the past and we're going to continue to do those things there, but everybody's ready to go. You know, we tell every guy, whether you want two, three, four or five, it doesn't matter. You prepare yourself as you were the starter. And if, when your chance comes, if you do that and you approach it with that mentality, then when your time comes, you're going to be ready and you're going to be fine. Coach Bonds, Cameron again. Uh, obviously, this offseason is a little different in a lot of ways, actually. So probably a lot different. But for Mikhail specifically, um, last year, I think everybody was trying to figure out if it was going to be him or Juwan as starting quarterback. This year, you have a lot of people telling him he might be third, maybe fourth best quarterback in the ACC. A lot of expectations for him. Do you have to talk to him about that stuff at all, or is he somebody that kind of just doesn't really uh, pay attention to that stuff much? No, we talk all the time, and Malik is not the type of kid that will let it go to his head, but we're, we're human, and it's just human nature to kind of sometimes listen a little too much to the outside and just kind of get caught up in the hype. So we talk about it all the time, make sure we stay grounded, and there's times where we meet, and as a coach, I got to make sure that he does stay grounded, and but he, He's very understanding that this is just a process and we got to continue to work hard. And your work ethics is going to prove how good you really are. Not some newspaper clipping or somebody talking about how good you're supposed to be. It's how you work right now in the offseason and then obviously how you go out there and perform. Coach Rick Bozich from WDRB in Louisville, what, what are the one or two things that he really needs to do to sort of even go to the next level? Well, he just continued to do the things that he's doing right now, and that's just working hard, throwing the football. You know, his arm velocity has improved tremendously. The one thing that he has going for himself right off the bat is, like I said before, is he has a great touch on the ball. He really does. And, and you see in every single game that we played that he played in last year, you can see the touch. Uh, you can see his decision-making is getting better. And that's the biggest thing, and I think – you know, from college to the pros or high school to college is every quarterback has to be a great decision maker. And the better you, decisions you make, the better chances you're going to give yourself to keep growing and from college to the next level. So those are the things that he needs to improve and he's getting better at them. Uh, like I said, arm velocity is always going to be an issue at the next level when people are looking at him. So he's developing those things. He's not just using his arm to throw the ball, but more of his body, his lower body generating that power that he needs so mechanically and fundamentally, we have to be sound. And that goes for all our guys. And that's something that we preach every single day is being fundamentally sound is going to be the key to our success. Coach, you mentioned, uh, you mentioned T-Webb just a couple of minutes ago and, and about the future. What, what did you see in spring? How big, I guess, first of all, how big was it for him to be able to get um, some time in spring at, if it was just limited practice? And what, what did you see from him? Well, you know, Coach Sad and myself, we always make a conscious effort to make sure we can bring in a young kid like he early enrollee and make sure that he gets minimum uh, reps, uh, at least get him in there and let him get confidence and, and feel good about it. And that way we can see what he's capable of doing. And like any young quarterback, he's going to go in there, he makes little mistakes. But like I said, that pra- we had seven practices, and that practice that was five, six, and seven, he made some throws that 
they were jaw dropping and accuracy and not only the velocity of it, but the accuracy and the timing of it. Uh, he has a whipping motion. He's got a strong arm. He can get it done. He can really get it done. So when you see those things, you, you, you smile because, okay, it's in him. There it is right there. That's exactly what we recruited. And now all we have to do is develop it to the point where it's there all the time. There's a, it's, it's there consistently. And T is a very smart young man. He works his butt off. So he's going to be very successful. Uh, he's going to be fine. And we just can't wait to see him, what, to see what the future holds for him. Coach, would that mean you guys would be fairly aggressive with him this year? Do we should we expect to see him play some? I wouldn't say that right now. I just don't think that he at this moment is um, has shown that ability that completely on a consistent basis. Uh, he's, he's still growing. He's still young, very young. I mean, and obviously when we have three guys in front of him that have game experience and obviously McCall having the success he had this past year and at the high confidence level and then you have Jawan and Evan, then I, I, there's no way that I'll be able to say that he, he'll be able to go in this year unless something would change, and, but that's something that remains to be seen. Anything else, <clears throat> Anything else for Coach? All right. Thanks, Coach Ponce. Thanks, Coach.